Hi folks, thank you so much for joining us today. The session is going to be focused on informational interviewing. We started this because we wanted you all to start learning more about the different professions that are available out there and some successful, passionate people in the field. So my friend, Jason Steving is going to be joining us. He is a software engineer at Google. And in fact, I helped hire him for his first job at Google as well. So he's doing me a nice favor in giving us more insights on his career path and any advice that he also has to share with you all. Hi, Jason. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, everybody. First, uh, big kudos to Tiffany. Thank you for all the help that you actually did give me six years ago, getting me out of college and into the career field. It was a huge help. Um, as a sort of short introduction to myself, um, I'm Jason Steving. I uh, grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Um, I have a child of a single mom with one brother. Um, I went to the University of Arizona, which is my hometown school. Um, so I didn't go far from home, but I did like live in the dorms, everything like that. Um, and after that, as Tiffany mentioned, she helped recruit me into Google. Um, I spent about five ish, six years there um, and have worked on a bunch of different teams. So I've had a lot of different opportunities. I worked in Seattle and I worked on the Google Hangouts team. I then moved to uh, the Bay Area and I ended up working in like Silicon Valley. Uh, and I worked on the G Suite Security Center team for uh, several years. Um, I worked in GCP for a while. I worked on the assistant for a while. Um, and now I'm actually following sort of a personal passion of mine and I'm gonna be working in a compilers team. Uh, so on sort of low level technical things. That is awesome. I just wanted to tell everyone about how amazing Jason is. So when he was about to graduate from the University of Arizona, I was one of the many <laughs> competing offers that he had. Um, I believe you, you had like a uh, competing offer from Microsoft that I was trying very hard to make sure we beat. And we're just so lucky that you came here. And um, Jason is just someone that has a phenomenal background. It's very clear in his passion as well. So yeah, we're glad you chose Google. <laughs> Thank you for helping me choose that. Of course. Great. So let's jump in. I have a few questions for you here. The main people that we're going to be talking to today, Jason, are high school students as well as college students that are still figuring out what type of majors that they're interested in. And someone who has a background in tech, like when did you start figuring out you were interested in the STEM field and that engineering was for you? Yeah, so I will say that for me, it was not a straight path. Um, I, I was not the typical, I, I mean, maybe we sometimes imagine the typical story that you already knew from age 10. I'm gonna do exactly that thing I'm telling everybody and then I go right in that direction. For, for me, I kind of had this vague idea as a kid, I remember wanting to be an inventor. Uh, but I didn't know what to apply that to. So I kind of thought it was going to be uh, mechanical engineering because that's the more traditional version of engineering that I imagined. So I thought it was going to be a mechanical or an aerospace engineer. I remember going to orientation um, and actually hearing the, the real life description of what that would be like and how to actually get to that point where your work day would be like. And I really didn't like it. Um, so on my first day, I dropped the major and spent my first year sort of jumping around, choosing different things. Um, so. I ended up uh, sort of dabbling in uh, speech language sharing sciences. Uh, I shadowed somebody who was a speech language pathologist and found out it wasn't necessarily um, something I could see myself doing long term. Uh, I then got into linguistics and got really, really absorbed in it. Uh, and uh, I thought I was going to go in that direction, but then realized it wasn't necessarily like the type of career field, more like academia, something I, I still wanted to build. Um, so I talked to an, an advisor, um, he was a current PhD student in linguistics, and um, he actually helped me understand that, hey, if you want to go in this direction where you're still building things and using linguistics at the same time, you probably want to focus on that like building aspect first. Um, and so it was actually him telling me, like, maybe take a bit, go in this direction of like learn some computer science fundamentals, and then you could come back if you still want to and do linguistics. Um, so the combination of him and one more friend uh, telling me about everything he was doing in his computer science classes sort of like pushed me over the edge to get into a course. Um, and it, from there, I kind of just like stuck with the computer science thing. So, so yeah, it was really an accidental roundabout route to get myself into this like engineering direction because uh, I didn't know what I was going to do at first. I loved that story. So what's interesting is a lot of students don't realize the average college student changes majors two to three times. 
So for me, I went to college. Um, I graduated with a pre-law um, degree as well as mass communications, but I actually wanted to be in business. So I changed as well. But, and obviously I'm not <laughs> a lawyer now. And that's the important part about listening to what you enjoy or, and especially what you don't enjoy. And I love that you had the support from people around you, your friends, your academic advisor, like you use your resources. Like that is the perfect way for you to navigate and leverage your network. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just pulled threads. The next thing that was interesting to me, I just tried it and then it kept sort of like narrowing down a little bit more along the way. I love it. Great job. Yeah. Once you found out, hey, CS route, maybe I want to be this engineer. What did you do to prepare? Because there's a lot of students listening that are probably picking courses and deciding, man, which classes should I really be taking? What internships? What projects should I be doing? Any insights there? Yeah. The, fir the first thing for me was really realizing that this field is really broad. Um, yeah. And so when I got into computer science, I realized like, Wow. I mean, I could go in so many different directions. I could do, I mean, I guess the broadest direction I could say is like, do I want to do academia or do I want to go into the industry? For me, it was easy to decide industry. So that helps me narrow it down more. Um, and then I was deciding, do I want to do like front end or back end? Do I want to do like databases? Like, what do I want to do? So I kind of realized what I sort of felt more drawn to. And it was more drawn to that, like theoretical coursework that was presented to me. So like when I was shown like, hey, compilers courses, when I was shown networking courses when I was shown those types of things, those really spoke to me. So I was able to start like honing in the types of courses that I wanted to take in that mm -hmm. direction. I didn't necessarily want to like see uh, the entire world. I did want to focus in some way towards my interests. So um, I was really like targeting that type of like back end work, that type of uh, more theoretical things um, as opposed to the front end stuff. So I did that. Um, I then ended up doing one internship um, where I worked for a small company of about like uh, 500 people called Faith Life. They were up in Bellingham, Washington. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked there for one summer uh, as an intern after my, uh, after my junior year. Um, and that was the only internship that I did. Um, but the, the majority of the experience that I ended up having during my college uh, years was uh, as a section leader for the computer science department. Oh. Um, and, I, and I actually think that this was probably like by far the biggest, most impactful thing that I did during my education was uh, as a section leader, I was actually teaching uh, courses. So I was leading a section. So for a two hour section, once a week, I'd have students in a lab and I would basically reteach the material they learned from the professor that week. Um, and then we would go through activities and we would like practice hands-on with what we'd learned that week. Um, um, so I did that for probably two and a half years. Um, and so with all those like experiences together, I learned that I like uh, teaching. I learned that I like uh, just like this intro material and stuff like that. So um, I think those are the things on my resume that got you to reach out to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to bring that up, Jason, because <laughs> when it comes to interviewing, especially at these top tech companies, when you are de demonstrating your abilities, you need to verbalize it as well. And especially during these virtual meeting formats, you need to be able to walk people through your thought process. Uh, so you, as someone that is a section leader in the past, that's definitely really helpful. So it sounds like what really helped was you followed the different theories as well as areas within computer science that you realized were really interesting to you and then narrowed in, became more of a specialist in that and really just owned the space. That's great. Yeah. Cool. The next question that I have for you is, uh, actually, this one is related, but beyond the section leader side, like what else do you think really helped you land a job at Google as a software engineer? Um, I would say it was my algorithms courses. <laughs> so okay. so I will say that um, so my algorithms courses combined with the section leading aspect. So this, you've already sort of mentioned this, but being able to communicate your ideas. Um, when you get into an interview setting, being able to communicate is like the absolute most important thing that you can do. And particularly when you're interviewing in like a technical space, you have to be able to com communicate complicated ideas. So having done that for like a couple of years, being in front of people and talking and even coding on whiteboards as part of my actual job um, helped me a lot. Uh, the other side was like putting that, a lot of that effort specifically into the algorithms courses because I knew, hey, they're basically training me on how to pass this job interview. Um, so I would say like those two things in particular, like gave me sort of the preparation 
uh, that I needed in a very specific way to get over those like interviewing hurdles for it, be it internships or the eventual full-time job. The practice is, as you say, like not only were you section leader in the algorithms courses, but like that homework and spending on that time. If there's like coding competitions, I see a lot of oh, folks yeah. enjoy that as well. Um, so I, I love to hear that that's something that you really dived into as well. Absolutely did. Yeah. So so I actually ended up developing sort of like a core group of friends who were like either in my major and related ones like electrical engineering or something like that. And and we would go to um, hackathons or we would go to coding competitions and things like that with no hope or intention or anything like that to try to win. Um, really just there to try to like code for fun and do something together. And also you're getting hands-on practice with like these sort of complicated things. Um, and then other than, another thing I would say is that I, I would oftentimes take a very personal interest in the assignments that I was like given in my coursework. Um, and I would say that this is to me like the, the great like differentiator between a computer science major and some other major because it was very project driven. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always building something for my coursework. And when it was something that aligned uh, like deeply with my interest, I could take it home and I could just take it further than the assignment said. Um, you know, so so like there was there were certain times where I'd like have a personal implementation where I'm like, this was just fun. I want to build it uh, during the summer after the course or I would take things further. So things like that. I think gave me like a little bit more uh, hands-on experience uh, than I think if I just only would have done the coursework. I love that, Jason. And this is perfect because you just transitioned to a new team as well, and it aligns with your passion, right? So this is uh, connecting the dots for us all. And it just demonstrates that there's possibilities of making an income out of it too. That's super cool. Yeah. 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 Having worked in a personal passion project and then having somebody take an interest in saying, hey, you can work professionally on my team in that domain because you took a personal interest in it, it feels really good. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you. You mentioned something about your group of friends, right? That's what kind of made it more fun for when you were doing hackathons and different competitions and kind of going with the no pressure. I love that point because I always say that your network is your net worth. And if you're surrounding yourselves with people that really pushing themselves and really raising the bar, that's how you are going to be able to meet your potential or even exceed it as far as you even could have imagined. So I always want to make sure that I'm surrounding myself with people that are high achievers and also fun to hang out around. So I'm glad to hear that that's something that you had in college and I'm sure now as well. Yeah, I mean, I've kept all those connections. We still sometimes have video calls and talk about similar things. <laughs> That's great. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about advice for high school students in particular. There are some that are listening that are interested in pursuing a computer science track or technology in general. Do you have any advice for students um, at this time? Yeah, one, one thing I would really say is like, don't think you need to have it figured out now. Uh, you don't need to have it figured out now. Like I, I, I really want to emphasize that I had never seen a line of code before the summer after my freshman year of college. So I was a full year into college before I saw my first line of code. You, you don't necessarily have to be that 10 year old who's been coding uh, for a decade by the time you got to college. And then another thing that I would say is that I think um, interest far outweighs uh, intelligence. Um, I think if you find something that you're really personally interested in, I think that you're going to be able to put so much more effort um, than in something that you just think is like, this is like what I'm supposed to do, or this is where the money is or something like that. If you're personally interested, you're going to be able to invest yourself into it. Um, so I think like those combination of those two things, it's not too late for you to do it now. Find the thing that you're interested in, and, and then you can sort of devote yourself to it a little bit more than something that's just what you're supposed to do. I love that advice. Definitely. There are students at times where I meet and they're super nervous that they haven't chosen a major yet when they're applying to college. And it's okay to be undeclared. Um, it's not okay to, to not continue searching for what that calling is. So as long as you're listening to your heart, your gut, I think that's a great approach to it. So how about advice for the students that know, hey, I'm really interested in this track. What can they do at a high school level to really stand out against the crowd when they're applying? Because we all know how competitive it is to apply as a CS major. 
So do you have any insights or um, things you would tell those students? Um, well, one sort of uh, very first thing I would say is like, make sure you have a LinkedIn account. That's how Tiffany yeah, and, yeah. I, and I got connected. <laughs> That's a great so, point. So, yeah, right, you know, like definitely set up your LinkedIn. Uh, but, you know, more realistically is like sort of what I was alluding to before, like make sure that you're prepared for the interview process because it is going to be different. So maybe one more specific, like actionable piece of advice I have that I really followed was interview as much as possible. Um, so I interviewed at a, at, at a dozen companies that I didn't necessarily care about <laughs> before I interviewed at Google. Um, yeah. And I would also intentionally order my interviews in such a way that I was getting more and more and more prepared by the time I got to the interview I cared the most about. So, so it wasn't necessarily that um, in the first interview I did, even if it wasn't a company I cared about, I, I wasn't necessarily the most prepared. But by the time I do my eighth interview in a row, questions are starting to sound more similar and I'm starting to feel more comfortable being in that situation, being evaluated. Um, so that was a really big thing. I went to career fairs all the time. I would be handing out resumes and I would be just like getting that next opportunity to interview. Mm -hmm. I love that. And especially for the students that are feeling that they don't have enough experience on their resume, what's you, a lot of people forget is you're working on projects as well. Those things you can actually add to your resume and it all depends on how you verbalize it and quantify your impact or whatever the case is. So um, I'll link some resources down below in the description on how to write a impactful resume. And especially if you're looking for an externship, internship, all of the above is really helpful. Great. So I have one last question for you, Jason, which is, what do you really enjoy about being a software engineer and any challenges in this uh, profession that you would give advice to the students listening? Yeah, I, I think the number one thing that I really enjoy is the fact that like the same thing that I was sort of like hooked on in college when I, when I found this major and I said, oh, it's so much fun because it's like puzzles. Like that's really how I felt. And, and oftentimes I still get to do that type of work. It's not 100% of your work because you're doing much more. You're like working in teams. You're building much bigger things than you did when you're on those projects. But like there is still that core aspect to what you do as being like solving complicated puzzles. And if you're that type of person, uh, then that's just satisfying on the face of it. So that's definitely like my number one favorite thing that I still get to do that. And also I get to do it with people who are like oftentimes smarter than me. Uh, and so, so, I mean, that just makes it more fun. I don't have to get always stumped on the puzzle. I can actually be working and collaborating with people to help me through mm -hmm. it. Um, I would say a challenge is when you're trying to, uh, let's say you have an idea that's gonna sort of change the status quo. We're gonna go against the way that we've already been doing things and we wanna sort of change it. Um, I think communication skills, again, is gonna be something I fall back on that I think you know your, your computer science education may not emphasize. Um, mm -hmm. So like maybe keeping that in mind and, and maybe actually trying to like intentionally going out of your way to like get opportunities to learn how to speak, learn how to sort of like gather influence um, and get people to like rally behind your idea as opposed to just trying to like come in and say technical facts. Um, it's probably going to be a really useful thing to like learn early in your career. That's such a good point about the communication <laughs> aspect, Jason. And everyone, I asked Jason to do this interview less than 48 hours ago and he made time. I'm sure he was rethinking if he should be doing this interview when he um, said yes. So I'm very thankful that he's willing to hop on here and you have been articulating yourself very well and resonating, I'm sure, with the students. So I just wanted to thank you so much again, Jason. It's been such a pleasure being able to catch up with you. And I'll link Jason's LinkedIn in the description down below so you all can see his trajectory. It's been super impressive and he has tons of information about this, the work that he's been um, really focusing on in the past few years too. So thank you so much, Jason. I hope you take care. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah, this is a great time. Thanks so much for having me.